All right, get ready because we are diving deep into the world of Moroccan wine. Moroccan wine. You sent over so much on this. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I was expecting basically sunshine and sweet wines. Right. I was so wrong. Yeah. Morocco has a history as complex and rich as like a glass of aged Cabernet. It really does. And what I think is so cool is just how far back it goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking Phoenicians planting vines over 2,500 years ago. Wow. That's older than some of the most like established wine regions we know. Yeah, it's true. Crazy. I knew wine had a long history, but over two millennia ago? I know. That's wild. It's a journey. Yeah, and then to see how the Romans, then the Islamic period, then French colonialism, right. they all left their mark on Moroccan winemaking. Totally. Every sip tells a story. It's true, and you can see it too in what's planted. Yeah. I mean, you've got your international stars, oh. Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot, yeah. you know, often yeah. linked back to that French influence. Mm-hmm. But then you've got these really cool indigenous grapes that are just like begging to be explored. Like Grenache? Yes. That one popped up a lot in what you sent. Grenache loves the heat. It does. And Morocco definitely has that. Yeah. But what's interesting is how it interacts with, say, the dry air and cool nights in some regions. Choke. So you get wines with a powerful punch of fruit. Okay. But also this really elegant structure. Interesting. I'm thinking ripe raspberries? White pepper, Ooh. sunshine in a glass, but with a little bit of an edge. That's what I'm talking about. This yeah. is why I love a good deep dive. I know, right? You find these little nuances. Yeah. These like unexpected twists mm -hmm. that you wouldn't get from just like a casual glance. Totally. It's like finding a hidden doorway in a historical landmark. I love that. What else we got? Hmm. I'm ready. Okay, how about Sinsalt? Sinsalt. So this one's known for lighter, brighter wines. Okay. But... In Morocco, it takes on this beautifully savory character. Some even compare it to a good Pinot Noir, but with a bit more spice. Okay. A whisper of that Moroccan sun. Now, hold on. Yeah. We have to talk about Alicante Boucher. Yes. I had never even heard of a tincture grape before. Right. Red flesh and red juice. It's unusual. Wild. But it thrives in the Moroccan climate. Okay. So blends with Alicante Boucher often have this incredible depth of color. Yeah. Almost like an inky purple. Wow. And the flavor. Uh, blackberry jam, a hint of licorice. Okay. Maybe even a touch of black pepper. Interesting. It's bold. It's assertive. It's very Moroccan. Yes. Distinctly Moroccan. See, this is making me realize that just saying Moroccan wine. Right. It's like saying European food. I know. It's just this huge, diverse category Absolutely. that you have to unpack region by region. So true. Speaking of which, I was blown away by the range of terroirs that we're dealing with here. Yeah. Morocco has it all mountains, coasts, deserts. It does. How does all of that impact what ends up in the bottle? That's where the magic of terroir really comes alive. Right. So, for example, take the Mekinez region. Okay. Mekinez this is considered like the heart of Moroccan winemaking. Right. Long history and those classic rolling vineyards. Yeah. And even within Meknes, I was reading that article you sent. Right. The tiniest change in altitude, the soil, even the direction of vineyard faces. Oh, yeah. It can totally transform the final product. For sure. I had no idea it was that nuanced. It all comes down to terroir. Wow. Absolutely. And you taste it in the glass. Okay. For instance, a Cabernet Sauvignon from a higher altitude vineyard in Meknes. Yeah. Maybe on the slopes of the Atlas Mountains. Yeah. Where it gets chilly at night. That's going to have a much brighter acidity, a firmer tannic structure Interesting. than one from the valley floor. Wow. Yeah. Really different expressions. Wow. Nuances on top of nuances. Terroir is everything. And with those cooler temps, they can make some really stunning white wines. Yeah. That article about Chateau Roseland. Oh, yeah. They're making Chardonnay that rivals Burgundy with this wonderful minerality. Green apple citrus. Chardonnay in Morocco. Yeah. Okay, my mind is blown again. Right. I clearly had some preconceived notions about Moroccan wine coming into this. I think a lot of people do. But we can't forget those fortified wines. Oh, yes. Now, that's something I definitely did not expect. Right. It's like they have this whole other personality tied to ancient traditions. Totally. We associate fortified wines with, like, Portugal, Spain. Mm -hmm. But Morocco has its own unique take. It does. The Vinos du Morocco's excerpt mentioned that these fortify wines often made with Grenache. Right. right. Or even the aromatic Muscat grape huh. have been produced in Morocco for centuries. Wow. 
often enjoyed as like a digestive or with desserts. Interesting. So it's like a tradition. Definitely a tradition. Wow. This is why I love exploring a new wine region like this. It's so fun. It's like peeling back these layers of history and tradition with every bottle. I agree. Speaking of which, let's talk about how these amazing wines actually show up on the dinner table. Yes, food pairings. Right. This is where Moroccan wines really shine. Okay. And lucky for us, you send over a selection of Moroccan recipes. Oh, well, yeah. And culinary insights. Right. We've got Tajin's couscous pastilla. It's a flavor adventure. The vibrant spices, the slow cooked meats, the fragrant vegetables. Mm -hmm. One excerpt described a lamb tajin with apricots and almonds seasoned with saffron and ginger. Oh, wow. It just sounds incredible. Yeah, that's classic. What would you pair with something like that? Okay, so that's like a classic flavor profile. And for that, I want a red with enough body to stand up to that lamb. And those warm spices, mm -hmm. I'm thinking a Syrah or a blend with a healthy dose of Grenache. Okay. The wine's peppery notes would really complement that ginger and saffron. Interesting. While the fruitiness can handle the sweetness of those apricots. Okay, I'm writing this down. Yeah. Now what about couscous? Couscous. It seems so versatile, yeah. so many variations. Endless. Right. For a lighter vegetable couscous. Okay. Maybe something with lemon and fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. I would go for a crisp Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. You get those like citrus notes. Yeah. Maybe some grassy herbal hints that would play beautifully with that dish. I can see that. But if you have a heartier couscous, okay. say with merguez sausage okay. or lamb, Yeah. you could even go into a lighter bodied red yeah. like a sensol. Or a blend with some carrion. Interesting. This is making me realize that Moroccan wines are like... What? They're like a culinary chameleon. Yes. They can be bold and spicy, light and refreshing. Totally. Or somewhere in between. Exactly. And let's not forget about pastilla. Oh, yes, the pastilla. That savory sweet pastry often filled with pigeon or seafood. It's so good. A true Moroccan delicacy. It is. I saw a recipe for seafood pastilla okay. with saffron cinnamon and then like a sprinkle of powdered sugar. Oh, wow. What would you pour alongside that explosion of flavors? That is a pairing challenge. It is. Savory seafood, warm spices, and a touch of sweetness. I know, right? What would I pour? Yeah. That combination of savory seafood, warm spices, and then that touch of sweetness. It's a lot going on. It's a pairing challenge. It is, ah. for sure. It is, you need something that can dance between all those flavor profiles. Right. For a seafood pastilla, a dry rosé could be an inspired choice. Ooh, rosé. Yeah. Think like those crisp Provencal style rosés mm -hmm. with a bright acidity, maybe a hint of minerality. Okay. They can handle the complexity of the spices while still feeling really refreshing. No, that's an angle I hadn't considered, but it makes total sense. Right. See, this is what I love about like exploring a new wine region. Totally. It's like you discover this whole new side of yourself as a wine lover. It's true. So where do we even go from here? That's the question. Moroccan wine has this incredible past. Yeah. But what about the future? You know what has me so excited <laughs> is that these excerpts you shared really paint this picture of a region that's not content to rest on its laurels. Right. It's not just like we've been doing this for thousands of years, so we're good. Exactly. Oh. There's this palpable energy, oh. this drive to innovate while still honoring tradition. Yeah, like we were reading about all these young winemakers returning yeah. to their family estates yeah. and experimenting with biodynamic practices, pushing the boundaries of sustainability. Absolutely, huge focus on sustainability. It seems like there's a real movement to bring those indigenous grape varieties back into the spotlight. Oh, for sure. Cute. It's all about rediscovering those and celebrating those unique varietals. Right. And I think that's what could hold the key to some truly exceptional wines in the future. Yeah. It's about showcasing that diversity of Morocco mm -hmm. from its geography and climate yeah. to its rich cultural heritage. It feels like Moroccan wine is having like a moment right now. I think so too. It's like stepping onto the world stage with this incredible confidence and sense of identity. Yes. And it's a region that demands to be taken seriously. For sure. And for good reason. Yeah. The quality is there. Mm -hmm. The passion is undeniable. Yeah. And frankly, the wines are delicious. They sound delicious. They are. I've learned so much in this deep dive. It's been incredible. It's been fun, right? Who knew Morocco held like all of these vinicultural delights? I know, it's amazing. Now I'm dreaming of like sipping a Grenache rosé overlooking the Atlas Mountains. How could you not? That sounds amazing. I know. That's the beauty of exploration, right? It is. Whether it's a journey across the globe yeah. or just venturing into a new aisle at the wine shop. I like that.
there's always something new to discover something, to challenge our perceptions right. and to expand our palates. So to our listener, we leave you with this. Yes. What will your next wine adventure be? Ooh, good question. Don't be afraid to stray from the familiar, yeah. to embrace the unexpected. Be adventurous. You might just uncover your new favorite bottle. Totally. <laughs> and maybe even a whole new appreciation for the world of wine. Cheers to that.